Okay, okay, people. Welcome to LRFC. Before we start, please hit that subscription button, notification button, on like button, all that good stuff. Uh, yes, uh, the last day we went back, obviously, the Crystal Palace game. Now, I think I've, you know, come to the, to that point, I need to stop moaning, you know, and uh, just concentrate on the next game. The future, the future, you know what I mean? So yeah, let me bring on the, one of my partners in crime, Alid. Let's go. Yes, brother, are you good? Uh, Alid, yeah. yourself, have you recovered? <laughs> uh, trying to, mate, trying to. Uh, very difficult, but um, yeah, mm -hmm. hard one to take that one. But um, yeah, just uh, try to dissect it. I think the emotion has kind of just gone now over time. So hopefully we can delve into it with uh, great detail. Um, I've come with, uh, to the realization like you can't change things in regards to what happened in the past. And it like we got into the future. You know, what I mean, these players in the beginning of the season, I didn't expect us to challenge for a title, especially with the consistency of Man City and Arsenal. Um, I thought like with us, we're we're gonna you know gradually improve. I didn't. I didn't like see us, you know, being at this point of the season, six games to go, one point. Uh, sorry, uh, like joint with Arsenal and you know two points. Uh, and see, the wrong thing we did over the weeks is um, drop that form at the wrong time. It started at Man United. Let's be honest in the FA Cup and the other game after that. Um, if you want to win, want to win a league title, you've got to beat the likes of Man United, especially this Man United team as well, who are horrendous. Let's just be honest there. They're not the Man United of old. And the thing I'm going to miss, uh, well, not miss a lot about Klopp, we play too much of the occasions rather than the actual what's in front, the games in front of us, if you know what I mean. We had those two games against Man United in our hands and we threw it away. Um, the goals we conceded, it's just it's carbon copy of the goals we always concede in, in, in the modern games. Let's just be honest there. Every game we're playing, we're conceding the same type of goals, which is like no not enough pressure on the ball, not enough pressure on the player. And we let them shoot from, you know, angles that they could score from as well. This is, I'll keep going back to it. You look at other teams that's at the top with us, they don't allow that to happen. They defend by any means necessary. They'll put their body on the line in order for them to stop the ball going in. And we don't do that for some reason, bro. We just, even if you look at the Crystal Palace game the other day, the first few seconds they should have scored, let's be honest, they, they had the opportunity in the first few seconds of the game. So you expect, you know, you learn from past uh, mistakes. I don't know what these players do. I don't know if they if they analyse games, if they, if they go back and watch games, you know, the mistakes that they do. But it keeps reoccurring in itself. And I think it started in that Man United FA Cup game and we haven't looked back since. What do you think of that, Alid? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, just a calamity of problems at the moment. I just think it all boils down to composure in the final third. I think a lot of people are having to go at sort of the attitude by the players. I don't think it's, it's necessarily a case of an attitude. I think it's more um, an influx of emotion in that final third and it's the failure to stay composure. I think even if you could look before that, um, the Man City game, you know, yeah. ultimately the you know the lack of composure there. Um, you know, you got to beat the best to be the best, and I think yeah. those fine margins when you play against the top teams, you've got to put them away. And um, you know, I think what would have been a bigger cause of concern is the fact mm. if we're not creating those chances. Yeah, so yeah, I think yeah. we can take immense encouragement from the fact we are getting in those positions. Yeah. But if you, if you want to win trophies and you want to compete a lot across the you know the epitome of English football, you know you have to take those chances, and I think. Um, you could look even for as far back as, you know, the, that Forest game where we, we won. You know, I think we've been holding on for quite some time and I think we've been getting away with yeah. it quite often. So I think that four teams... Um, I think that game was after the Man United game, wasn't it? It was after that, I think. I don't yeah, think it yeah, it might have been. It was, definitely, it was definitely in March at some point. So yeah. I think when you look back, obviously we're in the middle of April now. It's been a good six to eight weeks, I think, of us really holding on. And I think it's caught up with the players a little bit now. So 
Um, you just got to try and reinvigorate the team as much as you can, I think, going into these last few games and just try to get as much confidence as you can. Uh, but that's obviously very difficult when you've got a massive Europa League game on Thursday yeah. um, because the stakes are high. Uh, and obviously going into that game on Sunday then as well, so obviously it's obviously difficult, isn't it? Yeah, you're 100 percent right. What you're saying uh, about the games, especially that Nottingham Forest game, was scored in the last second of the game. You know what I mean? And uh, and um, when you're challenging for a league title, you don't really, you can't go to teams like that and play like that. You know what I mean? And you, you don't. They should have actually even scored in that game, Nottingham Forest. It wasn't like um, they didn't. They, we just scored in the last second. They had the opportunities to win that game as well. <clears throat> What do you think we should do going forward, Ali? Like in regards to, um, I know you said clinical. We have to be more clinical, but I honestly think the issues we're having, in my opinion, is the lack of togetherness. Now, I don't think the players on the pitch are as together as they were, you know, in a few, a few, a few games ago. I think a lot of the players don't. You know, like when you win titles. You you win as a team. You don't win as an individual as an individual player. You get you have individual brilliance, but you don't you don't win it on your own. You get what I'm saying, like Maradona type kind of thing. You got to win it as a whole. You got to like attack together, defend together, and back each other in certain difficult situations, read situations as well. But from what I've seen, since some of the players have come back. I don't think that togetherness as it like we do a huddle before the game. Let me give you example. We do a huddle before the game. What, what did they actually talk about? Because we're making the same mistakes every single time. Anyway, um, do you think that togetherness is still there? Because you know, I don't think it is. I honestly don't think you know. If 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 you want to win a title, you don't play the way we play. I'm sorry. Like, I will lose our battles, first balls, second balls, third balls. We don't really win. And not only that, if you look at the teams we, we face in tight situations, and it, they get themselves out of it every single time. We could like block him, but they get out. You know what I mean? But we don't do that ourselves. We don't get out of tight situations. We lose the ball every single time. Do you think like am, am I wrong when I said that the togetherness on the pitch is not there anymore, like it was before? Or I could be wrong. I don't know, bro. Um, I don't honestly. If I'm being honest, I don't know if it's a togetherness thing because we see Liverpool in counter-attacking situations um, so often this season, and we're you know when you see so many bodies you know going forward and pushing forward, you've got about five against two. So I think it's yeah. a case of we're attacking together. Maybe defending together is a different issue, um, but I think ultimately that boils down and re reflects the way we play and how chaotic mm. it's been. Um, I think when we didn't win the league title under Brendan Rodgers, we were very chaotic. And mm. what shot us in the foot was that we were scoring a lot of goals, but we were conceding yeah. a lot of goals as well. And it felt like we would almost had to outscore the opponent uh, instead of actually win those games um, and control those games. When we've been yeah. at our best under Jurgen Klopp, we've had control in these games. We've had possession. Mm. We've we've controlled the game and dictated at our pace. We take the sting out of the atmosphere. We don't play to the occasion. Mm. Now what we're seeing is almost players who I think are inexperienced in this position, and I think that ultimately boils down to yeah. When you take you away, right when there, you yeah. take when you take away that midfield and bring three new midfielders in, they don't understand the Man United Liverpool fixture uh, no. like the likes of Henderson, Wijnaldum, you know, those types of players understood it. And yeah. that just comes down to experience. And I think, obviously, playing outside of England, they probably view that game as quite um, a big game, and as it is. But when you're actually in that environment, you've got to stay calm. And I think a team like Manchester City or a team like Arsenal, a team that we're battling it out at the top, yeah. they keep their composure and they keep their coolness in those moments, I think. And that that is decisive because they're winning games Mm -hmm. by controlling they're not winning games by being chaotic and you know taking advantage of the chances it was yeah. always added it was always going to catch up wasn't it like the way yeah we've been it's it's it's, you know a, I mean? it's not a sustainable way of playing it, yeah. can, it can last you a certain on. number of games but um it's not a sustainable way of playing and i think ultimately that shot us in the foot yeah you're, you're spot on you're spot on uh, we've been getting away with it for so many games and uh, we thought we we're going to do the same thing and it's going to continue but we haven't learned from it. I, I, I've said it. Like, do we actually analyze games? I don't think we do because if you analyze games, you don't make the same mistakes more than like once. You know, what I mean, it, it keeps happening again and again and again. Um, 
what do we what do we go from here bro like in regards to the league have you given up or you still got uh, you still have a, a belief or something can be happening along the way we could look at the fixtures again you know it's just short since last time me and you spoke about it uh we, we could look at man city's fixtures a, a lot of people are saying man city's fixtures are you know um are favorable for them they, they can like win those games easily basically bright and away eight o'clock evening on thursday night uh, they got Nottingham Forest away. There's two away games, and Nottingham Forest we struggled. Obviously, we scored in the last second of the game. Wolverhampton always have a great record against Man City, as we know. They beat them home and away majority of the time. I think they already beat them this season uh, in the first game of the season. Um, and then you got Fulham away. That's not as easy. We got that's our next game um, away as well. And then you got Tottenham. So how is this? I'm looking at their fixtures. How are people saying these are easy fixtures when we know. They've struggled with the likes of Brighton, home and away in the past. Uh, Wolverhampton, home and away in the past. Fulham, you know, Fulham on the day can beat anyone. We saw it the other week, the, the other day. They, they went for, away from home and West Ham. And you taught them, they have a terrible record against Tottenham, home and away. So, how are people already saying these are favourable fixtures for Ban City? I, um, I, think, I think ultimately it, it, it does um, just reflect the time of the season and we've seen seasons gone by City just reel these games off at the back of their hand you know what I mean yeah. I think um, they're two points clear at the moment and they've been a given a, a big opportunity a golden opportunity to take advantage I still am in the camp that they drop points I don't think they lose any of those games I know people are kind of um, you know in the camp that they lose games but I, I don't think City lose games this point in I think the most that they'll drop points is, is, is from a draw um, yeah. And then ultimately, you know, if you're dropping two points, you're going to have to rely on them to drop points twice. So it's going to be a tall order, especially given um, the circumstances behind. In order uh, for you to challenge, do you need uh, them to lose one game? So uh, at least at, at those games, two draws or a loss, is that favourable for us if we win the rest of our games? Uh, what do yeah, you of course. Do, like? of, what, course what, of course. So what do you think they can do? What do you think they can do? That happened um, with Man City. If you look at the fixtures they got, I think that I think they win a lot of those games. I really think that Tottenham away one is. I think even Wolves. I think those games. I know we've seen City sometimes, um, you know, mess up in the past, but we see them mess up those games in the middle of the season when the chips are down and when you know the stakes are high. City pull through. And that's just the way it is. I, th I genuinely think it does come down to a timing, um, part of the you know, you know, behind these. But I think that Tottenham game is massive, mm -hmm. um, and I think City will still draw points, as I said before. But um, I'm not in the camp that I think we'll win every game because ultimately the way we've been playing at the moment, we mm -hmm. can't get immense encouragement from the fact we can put together three or four wins on the bounce. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, so I think. You know, we just need to keep winning games of football. And I'm in the camp that the trophy, the title race at the moment, we're in the picture, but we're out of the yeah. conversation for the time being. Okay. So okay. we just got to keep going, try and win, get our confidence back and just give Klopp a send off with a trophy, yeah. without a trophy. It's just how it is now. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm really looking at like Brighton. I've seen them against Arsenal uh, at home and they were terrible. You know what I mean? But the thing is, Man City struggle against teams that play like them. You know what I mean? When they're yeah. similar, kind of. You look at Real Madrid the other day. Uh, you look at Arsenal the other day uh, with uh, Aston Villa. You know, like if you if you like have a go at them, I think you have got more of a chance of winning that game. The 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 teams they batter is the teams that just drop deep and you know defend for the for the ninety minutes. That doesn't make any sense when I watch that. Just play your game, and you got more of a chance. At the end of the day you're playing against a human being you're not playing against a machine so you just have to at battle that player in front of you to you know for you to get the favorable chances in the game um i think brighton away can be difficult under the lights uh thursday night you know what i mean and you know they, they're playing on uh, when, when, when they're playing um they're playing by me so they're playing in the champions league you know this week and they got the fa this cup week, the yeah. weekend uh and then They've got the that game up in, in, in next week as well. So games are coming thick and fast for them. 
It's not going to be like uh, as easy as um, people think it is. You know, when there's too many games added, uh, things become difficult. You know what I mean? And, you know, injuries occur. You know, players off form occurs. You know what I mean? But you're right. What you're saying, Man City. Yes, yeah, so Man City. No, in normal can, so, circumstances, they do, you know, batter teams. And these are the times they wake up. To be honest, these are times we normally wake up. You know, last 10 games, Liverpool start going on a run, don't they? And this is the season we needed it the most. And we messed up the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? So, um so it could happen to Man City as well. It could yeah. happen to them as well. So, yeah. But I'm looking at the Brighton game. I've got a little bit of hope in that game. You know, I mean, Brighton on their day could beat anyone. Let's just be realistic here. You know I mean, so um, the Nottingham Forest one. It just depends what Nottingham Forest turn up on that game as well. They can. Yes, yeah, the Thursday they, Sunday as well. So, yeah. You know, look at the short time in. in, in yeah, in between, exactly. You know what I mean, so this is what I'm saying. You know, injuries can occur, off form can occur, and all that stuff. I know, like we're we're judging City of past seasons. I don't think City is that team that used to, you know, do, you know, whatever they wanted in the past. I don't think they're that team anymore. They're different now. They're more structured in defending than rather than attacking. If you want, and you know, attacking wise, they just pass to Haaland and Haaland scores the goals. Before it was more of a build up as a team as a whole, and you know. Uh, that's how I used to they beat teams, uh, you know, at possession them tactic, you know, uh, technical players on the pitch and you know, all that stuff. Yeah, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm a st still firm believer something can happen. Something can happen. Like I'm looking at these games, brother. I think something can happen. Yeah, Wolverhampton away, uh, at home. That's a difficult game all the time for them. Pull them away. Uh, on their day, they can beat anyone. We know that, and we're gonna exp hopefully beat them on on on, on Sunday. But it's going to be a difficult game, in my opinion. And the Tottenham one is the most likely game that I can see them drop points, if you know what I mean. Because uh, Tottenham already, they'd already dropped points to Tottenham at home. So Tottenham away, how difficult would that be? And, you know, Tottenham might be playing for something as well, if you know what I mean, Ali. So, uh, it's difficult uh, for yeah, us I you know, think... to pick out games, but yeah. there's still a possibility they could drop points. The worst thing that can happen in football, people, is Man City going on top. <laughs> you know what I mean? When they go on top, it's difficult to retrieve that. You know what I mean? And yeah, but yeah, let me just read the comments before we go on, brother. I hope I'm yeah. making sense what I'm saying, like, you know, with the yeah, games. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. It's and, difficult. Andrew says hi, mate. Big up, Andrew, as always. Uh, I hope we win this league. Uh, it's difficult now, but we'll try it. I'm still not happy, Fuzzy. None of us are happy, Michael. But we have to. We have to get on with it now. We can't keep going back. We have got to go forward, as I always say. Klopp has to step up now. Yeah, he needs to do something. You know, like when you're promising something in the next game and it doesn't work out. Um, it's not a good sign, is it, Ali? He did say we're going to show a performance uh, in the Crystal Palace game. We're going to show up after that terrible game against At Atalanta. And, you know, we, although we, you know, had a lot of chances, we should have actually scored a lot of goals. They still failed, you know what I mean, Ali? He, he promised something and it just didn't come through. Yeah, yeah, no, it's disappointing. I think uh, given the volume of chances as well, I think the players did show that they wanted to put that right but I think I'll, um, it just rush of blood in the in the box and I think it um, comes down to that composure I think given the fact it's Klopp's last season as well I think that yeah. motive to kind of win this league for him uh, I think is potentially getting on top of these players as well and I think um, it's creating this unrealistic expectation that is uh, yeah. you know tripping them up at the moment I think you know, Klopp has to take an element of accountability as well. I think bringing on Harvey oh, Elliott that late into the game the other day. I, I think couldn't that, believe that, bro. Like, that's yeah, you know, that. that's that, comes down that. To, that comes down to panic. Um, and, you know, managers experience panic as well. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's just about staying cool, staying calm um, and just breeding that confidence, I think. Uh, and it'll just, it'll just transcend throughout the team once it's there. Oh, 100%. You're correct about that. So, um, we move on to Arsenal. Um, what do you think of Arsenal, bro? I'll be, let me just actually read Hash's, uh, um, I just call him Hash because it's a long, it's a long name, Hash. Um, he says, I hope we are not out of top four, out four by the end of the season. I don't think we're going to be out of the top four. I honestly don't think so. I think we're, we're still going to be there. Uh, we're still challenging for a title, so I don't think. You know, like you're getting 71 points. I don't think that gets you out of the, you know, top four. So, um, I think we'll be fine. 
We'll be fine. So, Either yeah. way, if we win it or we win the league or not, I think we'll be fine. Big up H, man. Big up H. Always H. Uh, Cedric says, uh, big up Fozzy, big up uh, Cedric. Giving us a big up on the Big channel. up Cedric. Uh, blessed up. <laughs> Bless Cedric. Big up Red Bird, as always, man. Always supportive. I'm still miffed, Fuzzy. <laughs> we all are, mate. We all are. We all are. We all are. Um, Hollywood uh, Rock says the players look like they are CB, uh, CBA. Yeah. Um, you look at Arsenal. Do you think... Have you like given up on them? Considering like they dropped points at home to Aston Villa the other day. You know, Aston Villa can be... In, on the day can beat anyone. Let's be realistic. I mean, they are in, in in the top four, aren't they, Aston Villa? So it shows they're not there um, by not deserving it, if you know what I mean. They do deserve to be where they are in the league. What do you think of yeah. Arsenal, bro? Uh, yeah, no, they're not out of it. And I think anyone who's given up on them is is naive. I think if, you, if you're saying they've bottled it as well, I think you, you, know, you have to kind of look at their performances over the course of the season and just think that, you know, they they're solid. I think if any if the league stopped now and hypothetically we were to say Arsenal won the league, I think no one can really dispute that. They've played like a title winning team. No. Um so, you know, to, as a logical extension of that, they should still be in in that conversation. They've still got some tricky games and I think uh Aston Villa are top side. Um I think they're a very tricky side and they're a side that if you overestimate or underestimate them, uh, they will punish you. Um, and I, I was quite worried, actually, because imagine Aston Villa against us on Sunday. Oh. The amount of, yeah, that would have been that would have been a brutal, brutal um, outcome. That, But Arsenal, look, I genuinely believe that result that we had had an impact on their performance because yes, I 100%. think at home I said that. they would have beaten Villa, I think. Um I just think it comes down to again when you want it too much. Yeah. Sometimes things just just you know subside and they don't quite work in your favour. And I think that's yeah. what you know worked didn't work out for Arsenal. I think if you just stay calm, stay composed, you just pick them off. The Arsenal have got world class players, and I think those fixtures there they will yeah. they will get a lot of wins still. Uh, but I think that Chelsea one given. Um, how well Chelsea played, albeit it was against a poor Everton side, but they played well yesterday. I think that Tottenham game then is is huge. But this yeah, is what I look at about Arsenal. Yeah, uh, they they're gonna struggle, I think now. Um, but you, you made a brilliant point, a spot on point. Us playing before them and us losing. Has, did affect their, their performance? Yeah, against, uh, I mean we've seen it, bro. We've seen it. Yeah. We, see, we do that, that ourselves. We do that ourselves. Yeah. You know what I mean, so it's yeah. not, it's not the, the, the first time. You know what I mean? That, that happened to 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 our, uh, you know teams. We see it ourselves. We see it ourselves all the time. And um, when they're looking at when you're looking at other teams, and you play at different times, it does affect you. And that's what's happened to Arsenal, in my opinion. Um, they were overconfident all season. And yeah, I think they put their fan base put too much pressure on their team as well. You know, I mean, we don't put pressure, but it still doesn't work either way, does it? Really, if you think about it, Alid. If, if we put pressure on our team, if we don't, there's still really the it's still the you know the same outcome will come in a way, man. We're either gonna win, lose, or draw. But yeah, I I, I look at Arsenal. I think they're gonna struggle now. I honestly think that. I'm looking at the games. Wolverhampton away. It's not an easy game. Chelsea at home. Chelsea just hit a form recently. Arsenal, uh, sorry, Tottenham away. You know what I mean? Bournemouth on their day can beat anyone. We've seen it. They beat Man United. And look at that, look at that fixtures, bro. Like how, how is that favourable to Arsenal? They uh -huh. either gonna, they either, they're either gonna overextend themselves to the point players will get injured. They're gonna tire themselves like, like I said, like obviously overextend tired and same thing. Um, and you know they'll pick up injuries because you know it's just too much, and and, and they got the Champions League as well in, in between, so maybe they'll get out of the Champions League I guess by Munich and maybe concentrate on the on the Premier League. But I'm looking at those games; they're coming thick and fast. Like that's three look the twentieth to the like twenty third. That's not even rest in between, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, no, no. I th I think. The ultimate test, I think, for Arsenal is if they can come past Bayern. I think 
If you, you think the confidence the... will go up? Like if, if yeah, happens. if they if they beat Bayern um, and they put in a good performance, I think the whole picture changes, and a lot of people say, "Oh well, can't really rule them out and can't pull them out of the picture." Mm. So I think if you see that that Bayern Munich, if they get past Bayern, yeah. I think they will return to winning ways in the league. If they come unstuck against Bayern, yeah. then I think we're in a position as fans to build a bigger case study to analyse Arsenal's fixtures and actually think, well, look, the those three days, and it, if you think they get past Bayern as well, even if they do get past Bayern, they're going to have face either the City or Real Madrid in between yeah. Tottenham and Bournemouth. Do you know what I mean? So it's going to be still a tall order for them. But um, yeah, I think seeing that game of tomorrow, I think it'll be a big case study to kind of analyse their fixtures going forward. Yeah, I was looking at that. assets. Crazy fixtures, man. I don't know how. I don't know who thought of these fixtures for Arsenal because that's that's harsh, man. That's really harsh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What the heck? And then the Champions League in between. You know what I mean? But like yeah. you said, if they play in the Champions League, it could be a confidence booster for them. You know, if they 100%. Beat Bayern Munich, especially going away. To, listen, Bayern Munich, even in a bad form, that's still a great club. You know what I mean? That's that's still, still a good team. Yeah, and um, going away to you know Munich and beating them at their grand. Uh, can be confident booster for anyone, anyone, you know what I'm saying? But people, like I always say, hit that like button, subscription button, notification button, that good stuff. We're, we're bringing uh, content for you guys on a regular basis. I, we did make that promise. And, you know, uh, if, you, if you're in the other uh, other social media, such as Facebook, Twitch, uh, X, uh, formerly known as Twitter, and Instagram, please come to our YouTube subscribe. The road to 2000, uh, myself, Alid, and, and, and Nurebeat. We're trying to bring you the best content possible. We're going to be active on on um, X as well. We're going to do spaces on there. I'm not going to do it, but someone else is going to do it for, for us. You know what I mean? And uh, um, yeah, make the channel as big as possible. I want you guys to have something, you know, that you could, in, you know, interact with, you know, feel like home. And uh, have difference of opinion, if you know what I mean, people. It's not just us two that that's on this channel. There's other people like Anton, like uh, Uncle Rod, and you know we bring other people that's you know part of the channel as well on here. So um, we gratefully appreciate your help in, in the first place. No, no, we're not. You know, you're not noticed. Your help is not noticed. And yeah, just just hit that subscription button, notification button, like button. It's free. You know what I mean? You don't have to pay any guys. You know I mean, it's just helping out the channel. The likes. Hits, you know, the likes is for the algorithm. It goes around YouTube, PBS, and you know, they, they come to the YouTube channel, subscribe as well. The subscription helps us, you know, elevates us to the next level. Um, we want to catch up those other channels, and you know, if not, like you know, be empower them, surpass them as well. Uh, we're gonna do our best to you know work as hard as we can to get there as well. And I appreciate you all always commenting, always here. I, I didn't even promote this like. It, more than an hour ago and everybody's already here uh, you know supporting us and uh, we appreciate that we really appreciate that people so, yeah so um Alid, these fixtures it could go either way for Arsenal. that's what you said right yeah it could, yeah you know take them to the next level or or you know it could just derail them uh, to the point that you know they're at the title race so we move on to us our fixtures bro what do you think of them? Are they tough uh, or are they yeah. not? Yeah, they're tough. They're tough. Two away. away games already, like two games away already, bro. Yeah, yeah. We got Atalanta as well. Um, yeah, uh, Atalanta away. We know <laughs> it's, it's a big game in its in, it, in its own right. That game then Fulham away. No good Fulham have been. Um, I think so. Basically, it's four away games. It looks like you know Atalanta, yeah. uh, Fulham away. Everton away midweek and West Ham away. Yeah, I think every game respectively in in its own right is a tricky game. You got Everton scrapping it out at the bottom. Uh, West Ham then twelve thirty. Tottenham then at home. Do you know what I mean? It's it's a lot of lot of big games. Then you got to think if we if we we are in a, a position hypothetically where we are in the, the Europa League semi finals, you've got to s sort them in. Still a very very tall order for us, bro. Very tall order, and given the way we're playing at the moment, yeah. I just think um, I'm just kind of looking at it one game from a time because it's just mm -hmm. it changes all the time, changes all the time, and given the way we're playing at the moment, 
these weeks are so crucial. These weeks, I mean, even look at, if you look at it from a city perspective, yeah. you can almost be in it or out of it in the space of a week. And that's what we've experienced, I think. Um, mm. you, you know, you've got the league game, then they've got the Champions League in the week, and then they've got the FA Cup. You yeah. win three of those games, you feel invincible, really, to the point where you're going to go on and win everything. Um, ha- but, have you noticed, Ali, the, like, sorry to interrupt, Robert. That's all good. Have you noticed, like, with Liverpool and Klopp, uh, under Klopp. I'm not saying that because it's leaving. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not like uh, the type of fan that you know cheers some people and you know and stays there. I do go, you know, like I, I, from uh, like cheering to not, you know, to being in the middle and to not liking. I, I'm consistent with that because that's how I see football. That's how everyone should see football. You're not going to be happy every single time. You can't be, you know, uh, you know, happy between, you know. Uh, less happy. Um, have you noticed about Klopp's team, brother? Like uh, since he's been here, when we're on form, we're really on form. Like we go on a run of games winning, but when we're off form, we're really off form. We draw, we lose, and you know it's consistent. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't really like. There's not in between. You get know what I'm saying, brother? There's no like win and then you lose or something like that. But it's always you know when we're on form, we're on form, and when we're bad, we're bad. I mean, this is this is what we change in the new management next season. What do you think about that? Yeah, yeah, I think, um, yeah, I know what you're saying. There's no sort of half ground, no, um, you know, middle ground. It's it's very much we're either really good, really bad. Just boils down to consistency. If you can churn out mm-hmm. consistency, um, mm-hmm. you know, in in a positive sense, then um, yeah, that's obviously. The, the main ingredient but yeah it, it is a cause of concern because you you just think well it's a confidence thing and it, it just snowball yeah. effects and it, it that domino effect um it could be catastrophic when you look at it from a, a perspective of yeah. it could take away our chances of yeah. winning trophies uh next season um i think you know ruben amarim if it is going to be him um mm. We'll have to just relay the foundations, make his own, put his own blueprint on the team. I think we'll have to adjust our expectations again, be no. sort of anticipate even more inconsistency given you know that transition. Um, uh, I think at the end of the day, Jurgen Klopp is a manager that wears his heart on his sleeve, and when things go well, you know they go really well, and when things really go well. bad, you know we've got to kind of dig ourselves out the fire, and I think that's just a, a, in a position that we are at the moment, and. The onus is on us to get ourselves out. Yeah, we've got the quality at the end of the day, people. So exactly. we still have that belief, you know what I mean? I know like a lot of our fan base, you know, they're just irate. They're not happy at the moment. I was like that, but I'll forget it within a day, you know what I mean? I always have a go, then you forget, you know what I mean? Because you've got to look to the next game and the future. If you don't look into things like that and then you keep being negative on a regular basis, it, it does go to the players, it goes to the manager, and you know, their confidence ain't going to be helped by us being angry all the time. Do you get what I'm saying, guys? I know you majority have given up on the title, but there's still that, you know, that hope. There's still that Don't hope. Don't give up, yeah. Yeah, Don't there's, up. there's still that hope. If something might go wrong. Man City could lose two players in a game and lose a game. You know what I mean? That's all we need, just one game for them to lose. We need one game from Arsenal. You look at the Arsenal fixtures. <laughs> it doesn't look good either. So anything can happen. Expect the unexpected. I know before we lost by one point and they didn't go through a bad run and all that stuff. But you know when there's three teams challenging, like, it can be difficult at times, guys. It can be difficult at times. So just have that little help and, and help the players out. You know what I mean? Um, you, we might, they might not have done what we needed them to do like in regards to challenging in the last few games. But they got us here in the first place. I mean, <laughs> majority of us didn't expect to be where we are, you know, considering what we went through last season. Last season was terrible. We were stuck in eighth, majority of it. And then we came to the end and, you know, nearly finished the top four. So, listen, um, just support the guys. That's all, that's, all, uh, that's all we can do. There's nothing else we can do, people, other than support the guys. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, There's yeah, nothing definitely. else we can do other than support the guys. Uh, Redbird says we didn't even look like a team against Palace. It's like uh, the players forgot how to pass to each other. Um, you're 100% right about that. Um, as I said, the togetherness wasn't there in that game. That's what we need to go back to. Even if we have to take out some crucial players not to play, so we could bring in a player that, that can work that extra yard, if you know what I mean. Um, 
togetherness wins the titles. You know what I mean, we look at I, I, I alluded to a lot of times. You look at Man City. You ask yourself how many world class players they they got because you're not even sure if they're world class. You know why you're not sure they're world class? Because there's no player, one player that stands out to the extent like he wins the games on his own every single time. They work as a team. They play as a team. That's why we're few when we talk about Man City having world class players because they're in. They're a team that that wins together, in it, Ali? Yeah, definitely, mate. I completely agree. I think you hit the nail on the head. It's just, you know, we're a team. It's just a team thing. Um, you get that dynamic right. You get that set. And, you know, it's just ultimately it'll, it will tick it over time. It will fall into place. And, uh, yeah, I just think for anyone that's given up hope, don't give up hope yet. You know, there's still a lot to play for. I think given the fact both or every team has to still play Tottenham, um, and given the European sort of status of all three clubs, I think it's yeah. impossible to kind of come to a conclusion now that things are done. You know what I mean? Just mm. see it out and, you know, you've got a better sort of case study to kind of say if it was game week 35, 36, but yeah. not when it's game week 32. Come on, guys. I know, you know, we've <laughs> been hit. I know we've been hit for hope previously in seasons where, you know, we've we've lost by one point and, I know it's the hope that kills you and it's that sort of inevitability yeah. that, you know, if City take pole position, they're the team to go in and do it. But guys, mm -hmm. as fans, all we can do now towards the end of the season is support the team to the max. And, mm -hmm. you know, we live by the sword and die by the sword. And you and Klopp, go give him the send-off, man. Got to give him the send-off. I mean, you know, yeah. we'll, we'll regret it otherwise. We'll regret it otherwise. Yeah, these moments, you know, they don't last, you know what I mean? So... It could either go, you know, in a bad way or a good way. So um, enjoy the moments, as I always say. Life is about here and now. It's not about, you know, tomorrow or the past. So it's about here and now. So let's just do what we can as fans. Show those players what behind them and show them, like, you know, uh, the support they, they, they deserve because they got us here in the first place. You know what I mean? And um, if we show them that, I guarantee the players will run that effort that we'll look at the six games to go. They'll push through and, you know, try to win the league. Um, yeah, uh, Hollywood Rock says uh, they don't even, uh, they don't uh, have the minerals to win the league, uh, the, the title. Um, it's like, it's their first time drove these players to, you know, have this around them. Sometimes it can be, you know, uh, daunting. And that's what's happened to them, man. Uh, but still, there's, there's something can happen, guys. Let's just be realistic. Something can happen. Yeah, yeah. All teams have to do is uh, man mark. We have no answer. Um, <clears throat> you know what we need to do, bro? Uh, uh, um, Edward, I think what we need to do is go back to the drawing board. Make those set pieces count, if you know what I mean. Because um, I've been saying it for a while. We get about 10 or 12 set pieces a game. We don't score from any. We don't score from from any of them. Um, because either the set piece taker is, is terrible, or the players don't have the action. You know, at the ball. So those two, maybe we need to change the set piece taker, and you know, and and tell the players you got to attack the ball because Van Dijk and and and, and Konate keeps going up. They keep going up for corners, but they never do anything. I mean, it's maybe 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 we go back to default, play Trent from the right back. And just go for them, you know, those... Well, I, I, are you, are you pissed off with what he did the other day, Ali? Like, coming in and playing inverted instead of, like, playing as a right-back? Um, like, put the yeah. crosses in the box. I thought, like, we don't need inverted ball anymore. We're better defensively than we was last season. Why are we still doing inverted? It doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, no, it's so frustrating. Um, and I think that frustration kind of echoes that the whole team, not just Trent. I think when he comes on... Yeah, you know, he's trying to do stuff, but I think he just he's forcing it. He forces it. And I think if you put him back in right back, maybe just towards the end of the season, maybe go back to sort of default where um, you know, I I really I know Robertson's had his injury problems and so has Trent. Yeah. But I've I haven't really seen those A star deliveries from out wide, you know, from this season them, this at season, all. Yeah. At yeah. all. Remember, they so, used to have that consistency every game. Like them that to consistency yeah. where it was that inevitability. You put a ball in the box and someone's there. And I yeah. think maybe, maybe that benefits Darwin Nunes. The ball is, you know, he hasn't got, you know, that time to really think. Because we see with Nunes, he takes too long 
to to really come to a decision and by that point he completely overthinks it and he messes I'll, I'll it up speak, I'll, I'll speak about it in a second i'll speak about yeah it in a second. so i, I think be, yeah. if you're going back to default and giving you know putting those a-class deliveries in right yeah. that world-class deliveries in it doesn't give nunez that opportunity to think oh let me take it down or do you know I mean, he's got, he's got to go for it. And he's got to anticipate, and I think that's where we could invoke a better output from Nunes if we're going down that avenue. So maybe it's a case of we'll go back to that um, because that that did work. That did work. I don't. I know you've got to evolve as time goes on, um, but at the moment things are very one dimensional, as Red yes. said. And you know, if we go back and try and vary it up, maybe um, you know, maybe that can be you know the the missing jigsaw. No, piece. no, no you, you made a you made a great point there, bro. Like. Like, um, it's, it's, uh, like when I look at the inverted role, I see it as sorry, uh, uh, John Conway is always bro, but always supportive. Yeah, big, big up, up John Conway, there. always bro, always every day for you, man. The the to me when I look at that, what, what you just said, you just hit the nail on the head, bro. The issue that we have now is that creativity from the wing doesn't exist anymore. When when Trent and Robertson were what the best crosses of the ball in the Premier League. Probably in the Premier League history, I think they, they they've got the record for creating chances. Now what I see is playing inverted roles that don't really work anymore. And I'm thinking to myself, I, I saw him the other day. I said, Trent, the reason you come on is you creating chances for the strikers, but you're coming inside taking shots from outside the box that don't even hit the target. But after that, you don't do nothing. Your crosses are so his crosses were so poor as well. Could have beat the first man. Each cross he put into the box. I don't know if you've seen it earlier. Each cross he done, couldn't beat the first man. I want you to do what you used to do. Go by the byline, overlap yeah, yeah, Salah, yeah, yeah. and cross the damn ball in with pace. That's what I want you to do. I don't want you to do inverted role. I don't want a midfielder. If I want you to play midfield, I'll put you in midfield. I think this inverted business has to stop now. It's not working. It worked that season because nobody knew you had to play against it. Now people know how to stop that. We're in trouble in regards to that side of the game. Just go back to what Robertson and and and, and, and you know and, and Trent used to do, which is cross the ball in into dangerous area between the goalkeeper and the defense and let someone attack it. Like you just said, Darwin Nunes. They don't even give him that opportunity. They don't even give him that opportunity, and it's not right. I mean, if we have threats like. Robertson and, and, and Trent used to do in the past and you add on with McAllister, Soboslai and you know these other players on top of that from direction but we're not even giving ourselves that we're playing to the individual which is why we're not playing as a team at the moment Redbird as Redbird alluded to earlier that's why I keep saying about Salah I love Salah I love the goals he got listen some people say we sell Salah because you know he brings us goals and all that stuff. If the goals don't result into winning trophies, what's the actual point? Fowler scored like 35 goals the three seasons running. Never won a trophy. That doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? Goals have to result into wins. Wins have to result into trophies. That's how I see it. I don't care about golden boots. I really don't. I want my team to win titles. That's the whole point we're here. You know what I mean? So think about it that way i love Salah to death but if he's not going to work for the team run up and down that pitch help the young bradley out what's the point of you being there if you're not going to score a goal or you know be deciding games you've come back from the african nation you chose to go to the african nation when you knew egypt they're going to win it they're going to do they're not going to do anything with those players that you have you came back injured the players already were winning before you came back working as a team as one you come back you come with that stinking attitude that the Sheffield United when you're coming off. Like, you know, like I said, leadership sets examples. You don't set examples by, you know, when you're getting taken off against Sheffield United and done absolutely nothing. And then you start, like, you know, uh, start getting pissed off coming off. Leaders set examples. That's what you're supposed to do. When the player, young player is coming on to replace you, Pat him on the back, tell him go go and win us the game. Not like coming off like oh, you know, the world's ended around you. Come on, man. You're 32 years old, bro. Set examples. I'm not here about individual players. I don't care about individual players. I'm here about the team. I support Liverpool Football Club. Those players won't be here all the time. We be here all the time. To the end of time, we'll be here. Those players, they come and go. That's what how it football is. Stop supporting individual players, people. Support Liverpool Football Club. That's how you can win titles. I mean, I'm tired of, like, 
people defending players when they're not even working hard enough on the pitch. You need to run yeah. up and down. You need to win balls. You need to like at battle teams. You need to win the first ball, second ball, third ball. Win your headers if the ball's in the air. Why do other teams win those things and you don't? Come on, man. Fuck the hype. Cavalio, who played for uh, 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 Chelsea back in the day, used to win headers. He's about five foot two. You know what I mean, look at uh, Endo. He wins headers. He's about five foot two. Come on, man. I'm tired of this. You know, you know, player power. It's like Gerard days. Like, stop this, man. We're a team. We win titles as a team. We don't win it as individuals anymore. Come on, man. Come on. Yeah, yeah. It's, no, hundred percent. Hundred percent. It really angers me that you know. What I mean, like. Do we support Liverpool Football Club or do we support Mo Salah or do we support Gerard or do we support the, support Liverpool Football Club? They, Liverpool is going to stay here when they leave, no matter what. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, uh, yeah. I just think ultimately it boils down to just to playing towards players' strengths. If we're playing too neat, we've seen time and time again playing too neat and playing where we're relying on Nunes to provide that football in magic. It just doesn't happen. So if you're giving him a position where, if you're putting him in a position where that ball is precise on the money and he's got to make a split decision, um, you know, split decision choice, yeah. he scores that. He scores a lot more goals. And I think in order to accommodate the strengths and it even play into Trent's hands more. And then you talk it, well, the confidence that Trent would have, confidence Salah would have. And the, yeah. the confidence Salah would have, the, conf the same confidence Van Dyke would have and breed towards the back four. Do you know what I mean? It's a confidence. Yeah, it's, 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 and... it's annoying though, Elid. Like, you know, the game finishes and we're looking forward to blaming players individually. No! Yes. I it's hate... to do. It's a team I... is the issue. Mate, I hate it when people blame Cody Gakpo, man. I, I, am I feel honestly... sorry for that kid. He's such a good kid, man. Mate, it's, not I his am... fault. it's not his fault. He's talented. He could play multiple positions. Is it? It's not his fault. I mean, mate, uh... mate. I, I am probably I'm honestly one of the more optimistic fans when it comes to Cody Gakpo, right? Yes, his performances have been subpar right recently. But a lot of people scapegoating in front of Atlanta. I watched him and actually refined I was at the game and I watched him. I watched him and he played well. And the same people that were scapegoating him after the game honestly are just looking for excuses. He was driving the ball forward, he was try he was working hard on and off the ball, running which is yeah. something that, you know, some players, aren't, when we lose the ball, you know, haven't really shown, you know, great immense amount of, you know, oomph to try and win the ball back. He was exactly. there and he was holding off. He was um, riding the tackles. He was doing well. And I really don't like it when people scapegoat him. What people forget is he was a left winger when he was at PSV. He's a now a left for... winger that takes set yeah. pieces, that takes, you know, exactly, everything. Exactly. And now, now you limit got... now you limit that it ain't gonna be the same player, is it? Yeah, you limit it that, right? You limit that. You're playing him from a midfield. Klopp's playing him as a number eight. Klopp's playing him as a number nine. He's trying to play him to replicate the Firmino role. He's also trying to sometimes play him um, you know, as like a Darwin Nunes role. His most yeah. effective position is off the left. That is where we scouted him from, and that was where we built our portfolio off. That's where Spot. scouts built their portfolio off. So, given the, you know the judgment and the you know the takes on Gakpo, yes, uh, players should hold account. We should hold players accountable, but we should hold yeah. Liverpool equally to, as accountable because if Gakpo isn't going to run back, he puts bigger strain on. McAllister, or he puts bigger strain on Endo, and then what are we going to do? We're going to criticize McAllister and Endo for not making the tackle because he's caught, you know, with an overload. So, you know, we can all blame players, but ultimately, it all comes down to an accountability thing. And if we can hold all the players accountable for for our, exactly. our faults and our shortcomings, then you know that's our best way of, of growing as a team and not scapegoating. Man, we we really going to become a, the Arsenal of these worlds and and turn yeah, I mean, into just the, the AFC and throw players on the bus, man. Come on. I told you so. I told you all along that he wasn't good enough. Who gives a shit what you think? What have you done in football to even like merit that kind of, you know, um, you know, telling us about players the way they play and all that stuff? Have you have you got quali qualification in, in coaching? Have you actually coached Liverpool Football Club? You know, what I mean? have you played football in, in professional level? You know, what I mean, I told you so. I told you it was him that did it. No, it's the team that's not performing. You know what I mean? If the team doesn't perform as a whole. It ain't gonna work. That's that's what's happening. I don't, this, that's what I keep saying about Salah. Like I want Salah to do 
the basics of what I ask him to do, which is go back and help out the right back. That's what I want him to do. When we're attacking, what he does is stays there. Never moves. Never moves as far as here. That's what he does. A team, when they're defending, everybody has to go back. Everybody. Nobody is going to... See, look at that. As soon as you get back, where is the gaps that the, the, the opponents can get through, Alid? Yeah. There's no gaps. Look, There's look, no there gaps. Was, there was a phase where Salah was running back. Now he yeah, doesn't before. run back as much. Yeah. Mate, he just stays here. I'll watch him, mate. Listen, I'm not a Salah, you know, fish guy. I don't care about Salah in that way. You know what I mean? I don't care. I'm just a Liverpool fan. I'm looking at some players and him, he's more than... He's, what, he's got that ability, he's an athlete. Everybody keeps telling me he's an athlete, he's got the physique, he's got this, he's got that, he works hard. But why doesn't he ever come over here? When we need to defend off the ball work, why doesn't he ever come over here? Why do we have to beg him to go back? Why do we have to do that? Why do I have to beg Salah to defend for the team when we need him to defend? You, know, you don't need to sprint back. Go there and just be a backup for these guys, to be a threat for the ball. So when, when a, a guy's got the ball and he can't get out of the situation, he'll lose it. You know what I mean? Out of panic. That's all I want you to do. Make a player panic. But you're always here. I don't see you getting back. You're not a striker. You keep telling us, I'm a winger. I'm a winger. That's what he says when people say you're a striker. I'm a winger. But you're not a winger. Winger gets back. Come on, man. Like, it's, it's ridiculous that we have to go through things like that. Ali, too. If you want to win titles, guys, you've got to work hard. You don't work hard, you're not going to win titles. And there shouldn't be an excuse for a player to go back and defend for the team. There should not be no excuse for that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know I mean, messy defense. You know I mean, all the great players, they go back and defend for the team. You have to do that. In order for you to win the ball back and go attack, you need to defend. I understand if we're a possession-based team that don't lose the ball, but we, Salah loses the ball all the time. I see him lose the ball in, in every single I've seen him lose the ball about three times in a row in a game. I've seen him do that. And he never goes back and defends for the team. That's not right. Everybody, everybody here you can see on the on the pitch has to go back and defend off the ball. You know, when the ball is, is against us. They have to defend. Look, there's no gaps. Then there will be no goals. But if there's gaps and everybody's here, you know, moving up and all that stuff, look at that. Look, everywhere. Teams can get through us and score goals. And that shouldn't happen. Off the ball work counts. I keep telling you, off the ball work counts. I talked about Man City. I did tell you. We could never name world class players. We say De Bruyne. But you don't go above that. Because why? Because they play as one. And that's what we need to do. That's what we need to do to win games. I'm sorry, like, I'm, I'm having a go at Salah. I know there's Salah fans there that, that only support him. But he needs to get back. Since he's come back to the team, guys, we've been awful. I've got to be real. I don't know about you, Alex, but I think it would have been awful. I think we haven't been that team when... You know what I liked about Jota when he was here? You know what I liked about Nunes when he was here? They were complimenting each other. What I liked about Jota when he was playing in the wing... He's not... Let's be honest here, Alex. He's not even a right winger. But what he did is go up and down. What he did, he was direct. What he did... Nunes was scoring goals. They were complimenting each other. There was no Nunes. I have to look for Salah to pass to him. You know, so Salah could chip it in the top corner. That that, that wasn't happening, Elit. I mean, they were like, playing together as you know individuals in in regards to scoring goals. I want you to score goals. That's what Jota was telling Nunes. I want you to shoot at the goal. Don't pass to me. Shoot at the goal. And that's what he was doing. Now Salah is back. Nunes is always looking over here. Have you noticed that? He's always looking over here, so Salah can cut in the top corner. Yeah, yeah, no, it's just playing as a team, and it that's all it boils down to. Um, I know we're talking about it in detail and everything, and yeah, it's just you just can't I'm play not, to listen, all. Listen, I'm not having Salah in that way, but I'm trying to tell you, like, he's becoming a problem. No, I know what you mean. I know what you're talking. Your point is, he's he's playing like an individual where he doesn't want to collectively run back. Um, he's trying, and to, he should you know, tell Nunes to shoot, right? When he's got when he's in the box, it's not like pass it to him every time. He should tell Nunes to shoot. Because Nunes is always here, Alid, and he never shoots. He's always looking for Salah in these moments. Why isn't he telling Nunes to shoot, brother? Why isn't he telling Nunes to shoot? Why no, is Nunes always pass it to him? 
I don't know, bro. Don't know, man. Don't know. It's confusing. It's it's very it's very frustrating, mate. Very very frustrating. But you know, it's just just hopefully we can just re- rejuvenate form to a certain capacity going forward and just. But yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of issues at the moment, I think, with just work rate and just playing as a team um, in a, and out of possession. Um, and yeah, let's just hopefully that gets all with soon as. Yeah, sorry, you know, I know I'm going off topic and, you know, I'm angry and all that stuff, but nah, you know, no, sure, like, sure. if we don't like talk about things like this, it's going to continue. His behaviour is just a point, especially that Sheffield United game. That's when I took, you know, like you just fall out of a chair, you just f- fell off a chair and you just say, what the hell? You're a senior player, bro. You lead by example. You don't do what you just did, like getting pissed off coming off. Like, come on, bro. You've done nothing in the game. Stay young as well when they're coming on. Be a team player, bro. It's not all about you and your golden boots. I'm sorry, like, come on. No, so, I just, yeah, this... I, yeah, I just feel more, you know, it can't be nice if you're a player coming on and you've got a player, you know, chucking the toys out of the pram because he's like, you know, when Salah does that and that, it's not just Salah I've seen do that, you know, Mane used to do that on occasions. Um, you know, certain, certain players do. I've seen Sobersly do it once this season as well. Um, mm-hmm. Look, I think... Ultimately, if you're going to be a player who does that, right, you've got to. It, it's selfish because what you're doing is is what it looks like from an outside perspective. Is he's coming on for me? You know what I mean? It's he's coming on for me. I, I can deliver more than he can, and it's it goes back. It's it's an individual thing, um, and you know it's yeah, it's not great. It's not great because it doesn't send the right message to the, not only the player coming on. But um, it doesn't, it just creates more disharmony that isn't necessary. You just got to take it on the chin. Sal hasn't been great, so he has no, he, he is not entitled at this moment in time to feel hard done by because I think he's been, you know, blowing hot and cold just like a lot of Liverpool players at the moment, just like the whole team. So, exactly. you know, we just got to get together and just try and. Uh, if, you, if you're a senior player, you lead by example. You know what I mean? You're no more like 28, you're not 27 anymore. You're, you're, you're a senior player now, like you're 32 years old. Lead by example. You know what I mean? you got to get those kids behind you, you know, to the next level. That's what you're there for now. And I don't think he's showing any leadership, in my opinion. I've seen Jota show more leadership since Salah's been away than Salah's done the whole season, in my opinion. Because the way Jota was playing when, when Salah went away, that's proper leadership, Ali. That's proper, you know, like, he, I, I was shocked. I was just sitting there. I'm looking at Jota and saying, "Bro, like, you're a freaking leader, man. You make me look forward to watching you." You know what I mean? I wasn't a Jota guy. I'm not that person that always says we need Jota to win the league. We need. Jota. I never was that guy because his injuries just frustrated me. But now I know why some fans are always, you know, looking forward to Jota coming back because he shows me that. He shows me that passion when I watch him, man, and the way he. D- Played out of position in the right wing. The way he did it when Salah was away, it was just amazing, bro. I wish people could watch back and look at the leadership he was giving. Beyond Van Dyke, he helped Van Dyke with you know the midfield, uh, connecting to the attack. That you know how to you know help the team. Brentford away, the way you know he set up for uh, Nunes when he scored that chip and things like that. And you know it was just yeah, it shows some players can do that and. I'm shocked. I'm really shocked Jota can do that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy I see that as well. Um, I want to talk about this guy, mate. Where are you with him? I know where I am, but where are you with him? Uh, frustrated at the minute. Frustrated at the minute. Um, it's one of them. When you, I just think so. It's hard because when you when you when you go to the go, go to the ground and and actually watch some of the matches in in the stadium, yeah. a lot you know sometimes I'm like, yeah, it's great that the fans support him, and I'd rather the fans support him than troll on him because ultimately you know you're never going to get the best outcome out of, of a player, right? But sometimes I do get frustrated by some of the fans' protection when the guy's skies are shot. And then everyone's going, do this, do this, do this. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think sometimes, like, <laughs> you know, it's, mate, praise him when he's well, doing well. Yeah, if his work ethic, you know, on and off the ball, he works hard. He he puts his, he puts, 
he wears his heart on his sleeve, and I think that's what warm you know he he warms to Liverpool fans to that extent because he wants to to perform. But ultimately, he's very frustrating on times, and I don't know when the time is when fans start to change this sort of agenda on him. I am in the camp that I'm willing to still give him time. I still think generally he has improved on last season. I think he's more settled. I think last season he was settling in. This season he's more settled, but we're still waiting on that consistency and that output. Next mm. season, I think if he if he's his form stagnates and he fluctuates even further, then I think we get given a bigger case study to go, is he really going to, you know, take us to the next level because I think at this moment in time if you're talking about Liverpool competing for titles he is not a striker that I think reflects a team that goes for titles and that is not at his disservice because sometimes I think you know he's not really dealt the best hand by some of the players around him but I don't think I think going back to my previous point players don't place towards his strengths his strengths is the instinctive finish we're yeah. playing to him, two feet, and oh, and and over the top. But we're playing when mm. we kind of rely on him to make a decision. We seen when it was Newcastle, mm. and he scored those two goals. He's got quality, mate. He has got quality, and and people who'd say he hasn't got quality to take us to the next level. I think it's incredibly naive. But this guy, yeah, <laughs> this guy, this guy just needs confidence he needs players playing to his strengths and as soon as that's all settled then it's it's a case of playing to his strengths i don't think we're playing to his strengths but i'll really be honest i don't think we're playing to his strengths and i think that's why you know fans are getting frustrated with him but anyone who kind of like i just think he's very protected and i think sometimes he's too protected because i think yeah you know i'm no player subject you know immune to criticism yeah. But no player, I think, ultimately should. I mean, sky shot or like misplace a pass or you know lose possession and and you know ultimately it's Nunes, Nunes, Nunes. Like, come on now, guys. It's just you know, let's not get into a team. Like, I just think sometimes the fans are, and I think the fans have every right to. In the last few weeks, I think uh, you know people have said the atmosphere hasn't been great. Well, I think the football we've been playing, I don't think there's much you can support behind the football we're playing. No. No. But I'll be honest, some of the things that the fans do, like like the Nunes thing, like when we're telling Gomez to shoot and we're taking the oh, mick yeah. out, like it's like, bro, come on, we're a team, we're going for trophies here. This is, you know, if we're winning four or five nil. Then you can start, you know, having having a bit of fun with it. But mm. when we're well, one one or two one or still very tight, let's just wrap the game up first. Let's 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 be professional in the way that we support Smart. the club and, and and you know that will that will breed confidence. Then when we, uh, when we play, you know what you, you're hundred percent right. What you're saying, brother. Like um, like we're saying, Nunes, Nunes. It's getting to the point. Like enough now, man. Enough. For me. It's becoming. It's becoming like a circus. Do you know what I mean, Elliot? It's becoming like a circus, like entertainment, just to say Nunes. We're forgetting that we need to win a game. You know what I mean? We're forgetting we need to actually win a game. Forget about Nunes, Nunes, and shoot to Gomez. We need to win a freaking game here. Make the right decisions. You know what I mean? I, I analysed this kid. And uh, I talked about him. I gave him the support that I could. But my support is running thin right now, Elliot. I've, I've had enough. I've, I've really, really had enough. You know what I mean, when you're when you're missing from two yards out, hitting it straight at the goalkeeper, then we've got a problem. And you're the number nine striker, by the way. You're the number nine striker. Number nine strikers, they put it in the bottom court, and that's where it goes. And you get a goal. You don't hit it from two yards out. Sorry, people. You don't hit it from two yards out and hit the goalkeeper. I'm sorry. You don't. So, how much more can we take of this? I, I think now it stopped. It has to stop now with Nunes. You either have to start delivering, finishing the chances off, because we got rid of great players that could have put us in a better position right now because of you. I mean, you're worth nine. You know how legendary that shirt is. I mean, so you got to start performing like a number nine now. No more like clown kind of performers. You got to be clinical. You got to finish your chances off, and you got to stop overdoing things. One thing. There's a few things that pisses me off about Darwin Nunes, guys, yeah. 
and that's when he's trying to dribble and, and the second one is when he's trying to do a long ball a cross field pass that's not your game <clears throat> pass the ball off and get in the freaking box and get at the end of the cross that's what i want you to do i don't want you to take on players i don't want you to pass a cross field pass i don't want leave we've got players for that you're you're on the pitch to score goals go and score goals that's all i want you to do that's your job that's what you get paid for that's what we've been what we've been told that you do so go and do that next games next six games if you're starting again if i don't see a goal in any of those games like on a run like you go on a run in the next six games and getting start getting goals in those games i don't want to see you next season i want a new player that can be clinical that can score goals that can give us that helping hand that we need in important games that's what i want to get like you said there's too much circus around this guy now. It's becoming a joke. He's becoming a joke. I mean, I, I said it. I said it a lot of times. He will improve. He will get better and all this stuff. But if you can't do the basics of your game, which is putting the ball in the back of the net, then we have a problem, Elit. We have a big problem, in my opinion, brother. And this is where I see it now. I've had enough. I've had enough, mate. And I can't protect this guy anymore. He needs to start scoring goals, bro. And this is this is the moments that we need him the most to score goals. I mean, so I've had enough, bro. I've had enough of him, man. And uh, it's time, like he he rose I'm, up I'm, I'm, and do the basics of his game. Yeah, I'm in this camp where I'm still, I'm still gonna like. I still think, you know, along his trajectory, I still think he's gonna achieve that level. But um, but Alex, I don't want to see in the games like thumbs up uh, every time he misses a chance. Thumbs up. I don't want to see this, mate. I'm tired of it, bro. He needs to start scoring goals, mate. Yeah, he needs to. You no, know, and I, I completely get your point. Thumbs I up. I completely get your point. Yeah, but it's, what, it's like, like I know Darwin Nunes is number nine. You got to take your chances. But even Diaz is mate. Like Diaz is. How many I, chances I, he missed? I, I, when I, are we going to stop talking? A long time ago, bro. I, I'm done with Diaz a long time ago. I got to be real. Like I, I've said it a lot of times. Diaz is time. You know to mean, I, it's time I, yeah. to go. Yeah, yeah. Um, your dad, the dad keeps talking like you're a special player, that like you've done something. You made that position worse than it was before. Mane never underperformed like that. Even in his bad ways, like even when he was bad, he wasn't as bad as you. You don't create goals, score sometimes. And what, what do you actually do after that? You don't do nothing. He doesn't, do, Ali, he doesn't do anything, bro. I'm sorry, but I'm being realistic. If you don't create chances, if you don't take on your players, you score sometimes. What's the use for you, mate? Like you're not even impacting games. You have games in order for you to be, a, a, you know, a, 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 a big draw. And you know the way his dad is talking about him is like he's the he's the coming of you know uh, uh, Ryan Giggs or someone like that. He's, he does nothing, bro. He does absolutely nothing in the game. You saw him the other day. What did he actually do yesterday against Christmas? What did he do? What did nah, Diaz yeah. actually do in that game? You know, yeah. boring, bro. Just too much talk, man. Like, do something. You know yeah. I mean? Like, come on. Yeah. I keep hearing about this guy. Too it's, many players, bro. Too many players. Too many players uh, who um, are, are a sub part at the moment. No, but Ali, uh, it's the drop off from money, bro. This really frustrates me. Like, it's, it's bad, man. I thought this guy like, like was scoring goals and creating goals. He doesn't do evil, man. Nah, nah, he doesn't know. He he doesn't, and uh, yeah, it's just one of them. Like it's just one of them. I just I just hope he can get kind of get back. And yeah, I I I, I hate hate criticizing these players, but it's, you know at the end of the day, it it has to be done. It has to be done. I think uh, you know what is I think we do too much off the off the pitch talking rather than on the pitch. In my opinion, in a way. Like why? Why is his dad always talking, mate? Like we're, we're in the middle. Yeah, of the season, that does do my head. All... I can't Come even on. lie. I can't Come even on. lie. Where's the respect, man? With this old um... talk, oh, he dreams of playing for Barcelona. Oh, yeah. Man, just shut up. We're in the middle of the season. You can say that after the season, but don't say exactly, that. bro. Uh, Hollywood Rock says uh, City winning every game left. Well, yeah, we'll see. We'll see, brother. Uh, we draw. We draw versus Fulham and Everton. Everton were awful yesterday, guys. Absolutely. Um, Mark says yeah. uh, zero one shame. Lol. Yeah, 
Yeah, enjoy, enjoy whatever you have, mate. Enjoy whatever you have. Uh, big up everyone from Tom Easy. Big up, bro, as always, bro. Big up. Um, Alid, what do we have to do from here, mate? Like, can we win all the games or? Um, it's mad, mate. It's mad because if we if if we somehow pull it off on Thursday, that confidence is back. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And then it's a completely different conversation we're having. Because then when you've got that confidence, you score four of the five shots that we take uh, that are big chances. Yeah. So um, it's it's a big one. If we're, if we're still very, very poor against Atalanta, mm -hmm. then um, I don't think we win every game here on in. If we beat Atalanta... It's a completely different story, and I think um, you know we start to win it, win games again in the league, and I think confidence will be a big big factor in peaking at the right time. We'll win the league if we peak at the right time, and mm -hmm. right now, City are peaking at the right time. Damn. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the rock says if you smell what the final boss is cooking. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Wrestling is great. Uh, let me just see what's going on it. Let's see. Big up, big up, uh, Sim. Um, Emre game plan be Arsenal. Yeah, listen, Emre. He let himself down at the city, in my opinion. He rested too many players. Uh, um, that was the issue with that game. Um, but Emre is a good coach, man. He's a good coach. Uh, yeah. Let me just go down the comments before we go. Uh, apparently, Alonso is having rethink of, of about joining Liverpool. I support every pool player, and uh, will be fully behind the new manager. Yes, Gomez is a centre back. <laughs> That's what he says. Okay, okay. I don't know, but I haven't heard anything uh, in regards to him having a rethink. But we'll see. We'll see. Like we haven't like. We haven't said the manager yet. We haven't said who's going to be managing Liverpool yet. So we'll wait. We'll wait, mate. Uh, he says also says Amaron would be a good Liverpool. Uh, will be she say would be uh, will be good for Liverpool. Works similar model like Klopp. Improves players, young players. Uh, speaks other language. He is young and hungry. Wants to uh, Liverpool got uh, hot seat. Yeah. Sorry, hot seat. Yeah. Um, Justin says yes, Gomez. Uh, Amaron is is my pick. I hope he blots in dance. Uh, Kate Gordon and more. These are going to be something. Yeah, I think these players are special. I looked at Gordon the other day. I was watching Kate Gordon. That is, I was watching the youth. He's looking impressive, guys. He's looking very, very impressive, man. Very. He's very like. Um, he's like a number ten. He could shoot. He could pass. Um, I've always wanted to know what he's all about, and you know my thoughts on dance. Like I made a, I made a statement on Twitter, and everybody started following it. I said he reminds me of Harry Kane, and everybody went on board with that. Yeah, but yeah, guys, um, total agreement. Uh, Salah uh, will leave. Trent uh, Van Dyke will stay. Diaz will leave. Yeah, yeah, Diaz, yeah I, agree I, I had enough of Diaz, man. I really had enough of Diaz, man. I was more upset with Salah against Palace as he was no uh, nowhere to be seen. Though Nunes does need to stop wasting his chances. Yeah, it has to stop, bro. Like I said, my patience is running low. My patience is running low, man. Uh, Wakas, I think as I say, as soon as the season started, as soon as the season started, we are fragile. Honestly, a huge change ne uh, is needed to. To top to bottom, top to bottom plus owners, a huge, huge problem. A manager needs proper backing. You simply can't carry on like this. Um, I agree with you, bro. Like, we need to obviously, there's going to be a change in the management, and uh, the ownership need to be more supportive. If you want to challenge for titles, the ownership have to be standing up account as well. You know, what I mean, um. We've talked about this before, me and myself, Ali, and Nurubis. What I said was, this ownership, this coming season, will prove to us what they're all about. Are they with us or are they not? Now the blanket is gone, we are naked. You know what I mean? Klopp is no longer there. Are they going to start performing as an ownership? That's what I want to see next, in my opinion, that is, guys. 
You know what I mean? So, what do you think of FSG, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, it's just such a period of instability at the moment. I think as soon as we start to get our stability, we'll probably be in a better position to stay. But, um, yeah, it's just, I feel like I'm saying the same thing, but I just kind of try and just to keep the positivity. Just, just have that belief that I think if, if we can do something, um, yeah. we'll just take our chance. Um, but we we need to start with um, just playing playing the right football. But yeah, th- this team is fragile at the moment. Um, I agree with Wakas there. So yeah, um, yeah it, it's a case of it's a case of confidence, and then when you start to get confidence, that stability will start to just come into come into fruition. Yeah. Yes, Gomez says uh, there is nothing wrong with FSG. It's just Klopp never spends big and uh, relies on players playing out of position. It's Gapo, yeah, like Gapo. Yeah, there you go. Um, Hash says though I wouldn't say all of them would be world class. I think we throw. I don't know about you, Alec. I think we throw world class players far too soon. Uh, in, in yeah, the modern, yeah, yeah. In the modern game. World class, legendary, you know, legend status. Uh, way too soon, way too soon in my eyes. So yeah, yeah, I completely agree. I think it's uh, you know, you got you got you got to be here for years and years and years. I think before you secure a legendary status. And, yeah. Uh, yes, Gomez says we need big players back. Oh, no more Kelleher, please. Uh, it's not Kelleher's fault. I thought Kelleher. It's not Kelleher's fault, yeah. man. No, I know. If, if players in front of him can't defend, it's not his problem, is it? Like he, he yeah. tries to save as much as he can. You know what I mean? Dan's yeah. Golden. Oh, I, I, Go, Keller, Keller. No, no, no. I was just going to say, like, on to that point, Kelleher. Like, I know he, you know, shot stopping against Atlanta wasn't great. Like, two goals that went in, arguably he could have done better. But where was Van Dyke for that? Where was, um, you know, you know, where were these, you know, what Sobers like doing, dragging the ball back into to Atalanta, who just played in the counter attack. So, you know, it's uh, it's all it's all good pointing the finger at Kelleher, but you got to think, oh, why is he being put in that position in the first place? And uh, why is why is there no sort of support mechanism for for you know things going south? Yeah, you're spot on. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you hundred percent. I mean, and and um, if the keeper is less troubled, those tra- those goals won't go in. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, if you look at the last goal in, in that game, guys. Um, if you look and Bozo goal, sorry. If you look at the last goal uh, from Atalanta. So was like I think tried to pass it to Gomez. I don't know if it's Gomez or Konate. One of them two. I think it's Konate. Maybe Konate. He passed it to Konate. There was two of them versus uh, versus one striker. What angered me about that goal was it was two of them versus one striker, and it ended up four Atalanta players being in our box while our players are still running back. Do you get what I'm saying? How can you go from two versus one to four players being in our box to get that goal? And the rest of our players are way behind. You know what I mean? This is what I'm saying, people. Like, in regards to defending, we don't like to defend. But if you don't defend, you don't win titles. Look at all the great teams. Their first thing, the first thing they do, even the Liverpool greats with Ian Rush. What was our, what was our, you know, um, what was our way of thinking? Defend from the front. Firmino, defend from the front. We don't do that anymore. Players don't want to defend. And this is what I'm saying. It comes from the coaching. If you're making the same mistakes again and again, and you see it happening again and again, you have to correct it on the on the on the training ground. And if those players don't want to defend, if you ask them that, you bring on other players in their place. I don't give a shit if it's the youth team. I don't give a damn. As long as that player is trying for me on the pitch, I'll be happy. You know what I mean, win, lose or draw. That's all I ask for. I don't ask for anything. Just give it 100% on the pitch. That's all we ask for. And it looks to me it's difficult for those players to do that. So, yeah. Uh, uh, yes, Gomez, uh, Amaron, uh, so Alonso Amaron uh, for next job. Uh, we'll see in it, man. I think we're, we're, we're overthinking it at the moment. Just, just wait for the club to do what they have to do. Um, and we, we, we take it from there. I'm heading towards Amaron. He is a kind of FS, uh, FSG manager, works under a shoe, shoestring budget, that's what I'm to say, and uh, improves players. Yeah, he, he, I've seen his youth work at uh, uh, Sporting. It looks good. It looks very good. Uh, no one's crashing it on, uh, on, on Klopp, Lindis. 
I think Linda's is, is becoming a problem, in my opinion, guys. Um, I think the wrong person left out of the two, Buvich and him. I think Buvich was happy to be an assistant and Linda's um, always wanted to be a manager. So we got rid of the wrong one if you look at the club. In my opinion, that is in a way. Uh, uh, Klopp, Linda's play 4-3-3 next game. It will, it will be a repeat of our last two games. Yeah, it's going to happen. Isn't it? We can't do nothing. But Keller is no Ali. But to say it's Keller's fault is way off the mark in my opinion. 100%. 100%. Alid, that's us done, man. Great show, man. Sorry if I, you know, um, my passion taken uh, taken over at times, but that's the way I am, bro. Um, I think we should support the players and just get them through the last few games, in my opinion, bro. Yeah, just I mean, last few games, just sort of see it over the line. You know, and it's then you start to just i think in the summer then we can sort of really pick pick the bones and just try to um see what we can what we can do to improve but i think ultimately right now it'll be very difficult to see significant improvement before the end of the season i think just yeah. given the timing i just think you just need to support the boys uh and you know keep doing what we're doing uh and then just kind of have a look and see we've got options wise next season because I think there's going to be quite a bit of movement uh, both ways yeah uh, before we go Sim says no one wants to address that uh, the two elephants in the room uh, i.e. Klopp uh, Linders for our poor performances oh we did address it I mean I do have a go at these guys I don't really hide behind anything um, they are becoming a problem in my uh, in my humble opinion I did say that and if we don't win this league this season and um, Get the right stuff, then you know you can fault them. At the end of the season, we'll have a show, and we 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 pick out their faults. Still, still like there's a few games to go, so we've got to be real. We've got to be real. Uh, well said on uh, Pep Linders. Yeah, yeah I, I said the wrong person left, guys. You know he's in Klopp's head. You know let's let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. You know what I mean, at least with Bubic, it was different. He he loved being an assistant, and when you get these cowboys in that think they're managers. I don't think he's going to succeed at Ajax. I don't think he's a manager. He's going to end up at Arsenal. Mark my words as an assistant to Arteta eventually. Pep Linders. Watch. All right, people. That's us done. Please, like I always say, from uh, you know Facebook to Twitch to uh, Instagram to Twitter, subscribe to the YouTube channel. This is where it's at. We're going to be just doing YouTube in the future. So please come and subscribe to the YouTube channel to get us to that next level. Thank you, chat, as always. We always appreciate you, man. Even like when we just promote it one hour before you're still here supporting us. I mean, this is what it's all about. Uh, we will be back on a daily basis. Uh, if it's not live, it's going to be daily news. Um, yeah, and watch alongs will be back in the future as well. So please look out for that. Yeah. Uh, you want to say anything, Alan? Uh, no, no, no. I think you just hit the nail on the head. Just keep supporting the channel. And I appreciate each and every one of you who's uh, yeah. tuned in. Uh, and if you're watching on the replay, um, yeah, please still contribute by getting involved in the comments down below and create discussion down there. Not bad, Alan, don't go anywhere, yeah? I'll be back in a second, bro. <laughs>